Good day guys, this is Dr. Rahul Asam here. In this video, we'll discuss goiter, its causes, classification, diagnosis and treatment. I'll walk you through the whole topic. So to start with the definition of goiter, goiter is actually any abnormal enlargement of thyroid gland. It is usually caused by iodine deficiency. So it occurs in both patients with hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism. Goiter. So speaking about the etiology, so what are the most common causes of goiter? So starting with iodine deficiency, which is the most common cause worldwide, and also any inflammation can cause uh, goiter, for example, uh, Hashimoto's thyroiditis and the Graves disease, thyroid cyst and thyroid adenoma, thyroid carcinoma, and any ingestion of goitrogens. Goitrogens is nothing but uh, any natural or a chemical substance which interferes with the function of thyroid gland or termed as goitrogens. And one of the example is lithium carbonate, which is a goitrogen. So ingestion of goitrogens can also cause goiter. And elevated TSH production in case of pituitary adenoma or paraneoplastic syndrome, or it can also be congenital goiter. So now we'll study about the classification. So how is goiter classified? So before we classify the goiter, we have got to know about the normal thyroid gland. So how much does the normal thyroid gland weigh? It weighs about 20 to 30 grams. And the volume of normal thyroid gland is 7 to 10 ml. So where is thyroid gland located? So it's located caudal to larynx surrounding the anterolateral part of trachea. So what is goiter? So as we discussed already, it is an enlarged volume of thyroid gland, it could be shape and volume. So it is actually differentiated based on morphology, function and the dignity of goiter. So speaking about the classification, so speaking about the first classification, which is the morphology of goiter. So based on morphology, a goiter is divided into two types, diffuse goiter and nodular goiter. So what is diffuse goiter? Diffuse goiter is nothing but the diffused enlarged thyroid. Diffusely, diffusely means the whole of the thyroid gland is involved in inflammation. So the whole thyroid gland is enlarged. So this is seen in Graves disease and also inflammation. Example Hashimoto's thyroiditis are in case of iodine deficiency as well. So what is nodular goiter? So in, in case of nodular goiter, the whole of the thyroid gland is not involved in inflammation. So either it can be uninodular goiter, for example, in case of thyroid cyst or thyroid adenoma or thyroid cancer, the uninodular goiter can be present. Or in case of toxic and multinodular goiter, where the, there are many nodules, for example, there is a pictorial representation of toxic, I mean, the uninodular as well as toxic multinodular goiter. So the next classification is based on the function of goiter. So based on the function of goiter, goiter is classified into three types. Number one is non-toxic goiter. So in case of non-toxic goiter, the laboratory tests reveal normal TSH, free T4 and free T3 levels that is present in case of iodine deficiency. So number two is uh, toxic goiter. So in case of uh, toxic goiter, there would be increased thyroid hormone production. That means the laboratory test revealed the increase of um, free T3 as well as free T4 levels, which is seen in Graves disease as well as toxic multinodular goiter. So number three is a hypothyroid goiter. In hypothyroid goiter, the laboratory test revealed decreased thyroid hormone production, which means there would be decreased levels of free T3 as well as free T4 which is seen in Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is the most common cause of hypothyroidism in patients and congenital hypothyroid goiter as well. So the next classification is based on the dignity of goiter. So based on the dignity of goiter, goiter is actually classified into two types. Number one is malignant goiter, for example, thyroid carcinoma. Number two is benign goiter, for example, benign thyroid enlargement. So the next classification is actually based on palpation. According to palpation, goiter can be classified into three types, grade 0, grade 1, as well as grade 2. So in grade 0, the goiter is not palpable or visible during clinical examination by the doctor. So in grade 1, the goiter is actually palpable, but it is not visible when the neck is held in normal position. So in grade 2, you can see a clearly swollen neck, which is also visible in the normal position of the neck. So that is actually consistent with goiter on palpation. So next we'll discuss the clinical features of goiter. 
So speaking about the clinical features, usually the patients are asymptomatic, but there is altered hormone metabolism as we discussed already. The goiter can present in both patients with hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism and also the obstructive symptoms. Just in case of thyroid enlargement, there is a compression of trachea. So the compression of trachea can lead to dyspnea on exertion, which in turn the patients present with wheezing. And due to the compression of esophagus, the patients present with dysphagia, difficulty in swallowing. So there is also lymph node enlargement, uh, enlargement of cervical lymph nodes in case of malignancy or malignant infiltration. And also there is an important sign which is called as the Pemberton sign. This is actually a sign in which during the physical examination of a patient with goiter, when the patient elevates their arm bilaterally, that results in facial plethora. Plethora is nothing but the erythema of face, the redness of face, which is due to the obstructed venous system. So the, there is an increase of venous pressure when the patient elevates their arm bilaterally. So that sign is called as the Pemberton sign, which is the most classical feature of patients with goiter. Next, we'll study about the diagnosis of goiter. How do you diagnose goiter? So the first diagnosis is certainly by the clinical examination is by the palpation of thyroid gland. So the next, we run some laboratory tests to evaluate TSH levels to find out if the patient is hypothyroid or hyperthyroid. As we know, the goiter presents for patients with both hypothyroidism as well as hyperthyroidism. And by running the screening of thyroid antibodies to evaluate why exactly the patient presents with thyroid disease. And ultrasound imaging and CT and MRI for further evaluation in case of any malig suspected malignancy to find for a, to look for a malignant infiltration. And the intervention depends on the suspected pathology. We'll go for FNAB or FNAC. So in conclusion, we'll study about the treatment of goiter. So how do we treat goiter? So in case of non-toxic goiter, the treatment is not actually preferred if the patient is asymptomatic. So we schedule follow for the symptoms. But in case of large goiter whose volume is greater than 80 ml, so surgery is preferred to avoid complications. Alternative treatment would be considered as radiotherapy. So in case of iodine deficiency, the patient can be supplemented with iodine. So I hope you guys are clear about goiter, its clinical features, the classification and treatment. I'll give you a heads up on the next video. Thank you for watching.